Today we're going to look at the Butterfly, the brand new Ultra Compact from Boogaboo, which, as tends to happen with most models from the manufacturer, feels far overdue, since there tends to be such a big hype preceding their launches, and Norway always seems somewhat late on the release schedule. Nevertheless, we've now finally had the chance to go over the model, and today then, we're going to give it a thorough rundown, going over its advantages and disadvantages in terms of child comfort, ease of use, performance and mechanics, as well as in relation to which uses, lifestyles, and environments it will best suit. And beginning with some stats, the butterfly clocks in at 7.3 kilos and folds down to 45 by 23 by 54 centimeters, which is within the IATA guidelines for cabin luggage. It can take 22 kilos in the seat and 8 kilos in its underslung shopping basket. As far as the seat and child comfort are concerned, the seat's dimensions are one of the model's best features, where at 34 centimeters wide, 110 centimeters long when using the adjustable leg rest, or 121 centimeters long with the front frame mounted footrest, the butterfly will easily remain comfortable for children up until around three and a half to four years old. Looking at commentary online, as well as under our unboxing for this model, there seems to be a misconception that the butterfly's leg rest may be weak, as well as some dissatisfaction over its lack of full textile covering. And to address these concerns, I'd first like to point out that the leg rest is actually incredibly strong, better in terms of the key weak point that all leg rests of this sort have, namely the hinged adjustment mechanisms, than many much larger models. It needs to be this way, since it also doubles as a handle, which is the reason for its lack of full textiling. As far as adjusting the position of the seat is concerned, like a lot of other Ultra Compacts, the Butterfly doesn't have a full recline, though the reclined position is still quite sufficient to be comfortable for napping. The upright position can seem a bit sloped in pictures, one of my chief concerns before actually getting a hold of the model, but know that the combination of the padded insert and a two-piece backboard make the actual sitting position much more upright than it appears. The textiles on the seat are standard Boogaboo, well padded, soft, and decently durable, and the harness includes little extra comfort features, such as a 5-point harness and no re-thread shoulder straps, that make use a bit more intuitive. When it comes to the canopy, sun coverage is decent without unzipping the extension, though I would note that, when unzipped, the extended portion is made of slightly opaque mesh which provides ventilation but which may also then let in a bit too much sun when in use. Moving on to parent comfort, the butterfly's handle is non-adjustable and stands at a middle of the road 102.4 centimeters, while the shopping basket is a bit larger, sturdier, and more accessible than average, protruding out from under the seat with a hinged lip to make loading easier. Folding the model is delightfully simple versus what can sometimes be seen on Boogaboo strollers, both in terms of how it's accomplished as well as with the actual mechanics, which we'll get to in a moment. To some people, the process may feel a bit heavier on the hands, both in terms of depressing the buttons as well as the actual folding, than with more cheaply constructed models, but note that this is the result of using strong materials, reinforced rigid symmetry in the overall chassis design, and sturdy internal components, and also that if you do find it tough, for me it's fine, more or less like folding the menu, but I have had feedback that others sometimes do, then a bit of spray lubricant ought to make it a touch smoother. When it comes to carrying, the model has a shoulder strap in addition to the footrest handle, and though the strap is a bit short in my opinion, and the folded package is also a little on the bulky side to carry this way for long periods, at least versus the yo-yo for example, it's still doable, and can be a convenient feature to have during travel. When it comes to driving, the butterfly feels quite sturdy to use, not loose or rickety, and it has a certain degree of suspension, but the size of the front wheels, at 4.7 inches, relegates use only to smoother terrain, well-maintained pavement, indoor environments, and so on, while cobblestones, gravel, or really broken sidewalks will be a struggle. Alright, let's move on to the mechanics of the model, starting with the folding system, which uses a singular pair of locking points at these thick, rotating elements on the handle arms that are released via a pair of wires running down from the button in the center of the handle, and that, when released, allow the rest of the chassis to fold symmetrically at a variety of reinforced hinged points, both on the larger chassis, here at these forks, and on the seat frame. As I mentioned earlier, the buttons can feel a bit tough to activate to some, and unfolding may also sometimes feel as though it hangs up for a moment, as your hands make micro-adjustments to the positioning of the handle, but this is again the result of the strength of the internal components as well as the rigid build of the chassis overall, which is a worthy trade in my opinion for the time it takes to learn how to fold and unfold it comfortably, and for the increased durability of the system, where I would say that there's very little chance of alignment problems developing down the road. 
As a brief note on the rest of the chassis, the model's strong horizontal support, the reason it doesn't feel loose side to side, is the result of its thicker front and rear frames, a solid wraparound handle, and substantial extra support from the seat frame. And to highlight the strength of the model, note that the predominance of metal and extra reinforcement in its structure has made it one of the heaviest ultra compacts on the market, capable of folding down to within cabin luggage limits. Moving down to the rear frame, the butterfly suspension is pretty minimal, but sufficient for a model meant to be used over smooth terrain. The brake system is simple and solid, rotation-based, and using brake pins that extend to lock within teeth on the inside facing of the wheels. The thickness of the pins themselves is such that they may possibly bend a bit down the road, but note that this is easy to fix if it does happen, and that the whole system is disassemblable. The rear wheels are screwed to the chassis, providing a tight fit, and can also be removed should you need to replace the bearings or the wheels themselves. Lastly, the tires are of a type long perfected by Boogaboo, and consist of a good hardy rubber with a raised rim at the tire's apex that makes both steering easier by reducing drag and also slows wear to the rest of the tire by reducing surface area contact. Looking lastly at the front end, there's again that raised ridge on the tires, though as I said earlier, actual wheel size is a tad smaller than it ought to be in my opinion, being as a result the chief limiting factor to terrain capability. The front forks have inbuilt suspension, but no swivel locks, which are generally unnecessary for smoother terrain anyway. The front wheels sit a little looser in the housings than I'd have liked, which does mean a potential for wobbling problems down the road, though I would strongly note that wobbling problems are exceedingly uncommon for Boogaboo models, outside of strollers that have worn down for nearly a decade, with the only actual manufacturing problem that I'm aware of in this regard being the second iteration of the B, for which they eventually handed out wave washers as a free fix. So, though they do seem a tad loose, in this case I wouldn't take it as a major strike against buying the model, in particular with Boogaboo's offer of a 4 year guarantee. So, should you consider getting the Boogaboo Butterfly then? Yes, absolutely. Despite a few minor hiccups here and there, this is a very sturdy ultra compact, built to last, and it also offers one of the largest seats for a model of this type, folds down to cabin luggage size, and is sold at a very affordable price versus competing models at the top end of the market, with the rain cover. Terrain capability, as I mentioned, is limited, but given the strength of the chassis, I would say that if you live in a fairly smooth urban or suburban environment, this is even one of those few ultra compacts capable of being used all day every day as your primary stroller, in addition to being a great model for travel or for keeping in the trunk and pairing with a car seat. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, please subscribe or even hit the donate button if you're so inclined, as this sort of support really helps us to continue making videos in the future. I'd also like to note that we've had a lot of requests to compare the Butterfly to a variety of other high quality ultra compacts, and if you're interested in this as well, then just stay tuned on the channel as we plan to put up a number of comparisons in the near future. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description as well. Thank you.